Our first speaker is Netramani Sega. Netra is yep. from the University of Western Australia. His talk is titled Geochemistry of Large Benthic Forminifera and Thesaurus Hemprici as a new high resolution proxy for lead pollution in coastal environments. And when you're ready, Netra, can you please share your screen? Thank you very much. Thank you, Elena. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so as Elena said, my, I'm going to talk on the geochemistry of large benthic foraminifera. And we have chosen Emphysorus hemprici as a high resistant proxy for lead pollution in coastal environments. So I'm a, I'm a PhD candidate working at the University of Western Australia under the guidance of Professor Malcolm McCullough and Alexis Sedekov. On the right, you can see a picture which is uh, seagrass meadows in the Australia, in the Posidonia. And as we said, the large benthic foraminifera, the Amphisaurus, the white spots here, these are these Amphisaurus, which we picked for our studies. All right, going to the background. Why should I do this study? Uh, so we all know with this increasing uh, industrialization, you know, we have this industrial waste coming from, and we have this agriculture waste, this urban runoff, all of this contribute to the heavy metal contamination in our coastal zones. But particularly we're interested here in the lead contamination and how can we detect and monitor it. So as a, as a, as a, as a, as a guardian or as a, as a watchkeeper for the society, you know, we have our basic sense of the, what can we do for the society? How can, we, how can we help our community? So being as a researcher, we can either detect, we can monitor, we can develop proxies, we can report and for the policies which will help the government to frame some policies. So that's the background for going this, this study. All right, so we're using the foraminifera. We all know foraminifera are unicellular calcifying uh, proteins. And on the right, we can see there are three images here, how beautiful they are. One over here, one over here, one over here, nice colors. It's all because of they have the symbiont algae here. All right, and we are using this Amphisaurus semprici, which is shown here. And why are you using this? Because it has been seen or it has been shown by the various researchers that they accurately or faithfully, they record the seawater temperature and chemistry. All right, so now our studies. For the sampling and culture studies, we collected our Amphisaurus from the Rottnest Island, which is approximately around 20 kilometers from offshore Perth in the Southwest, in the Western side of Perth, offshore around 20 kilometers. So we went to this, uh, so this is the particular place which is called the Parker Point. And we collected this foraminifera which are attached to these seagrasses. You can see the white spots here. These are all the Amphisaurus Semprici. We collected them from here. We brought to the, well, our watermen's, we have a very nice uh, water, seawater sea facility at the Waterman Center. So we brought them there and we started our culture experiments with a variety, with a range of lead concentrations. And this, our culture experiment went for 16 weeks. Okay, so because it, it was a, a new work or uh, there was no earlier studies on the geochemistry of Amphisaurus, then we had to try, we had to try various methods to how, how, how can we, how can we uh, get the signal from uh, our Amphisaurus, which we cultured. So the geochemical analysis was all carried out at the laser ablation ICM mass spectrometry methods at the Advanced Geochemical Facility of Indian Ocean Research at EWA. So basically the whole process was like methodology development. We tried to develop the methodology of how to pull out the signals from these emphasis. The very first step was the line analysis. What we did was initially just like in corals or molars when people try to uh, 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 bring out the geochemistry from A, they go through the line analysis, the similar path we followed. We did some line scans, this orange ones here, so from the uh, outer towards the center. So we got some data sets. And then we went for spot analysis. So the red spots, the went spot analysis on the ridges. Then we did on the, again the spot analysis of a different sizes. This is how on the, on the basis of heat and trials, or with the development stage by stage development, we could retrieve the data sets from our Amphisaurus specimens. Okay, 
I will just I'll just share one example with you about the repeatability or the how we also developed the cleaning technique for this amphisorous specimens. So we actually followed three different process for cleaning, but here we're showing uh, here we are showing two different process of cleaning, and how we retrieve the data sets. We see the red data sets here. Th this is from one cleaning experiment. The blue data sets are from one cleaning sets of experiments, but these are from the same regions. Suppose is three, is four, is five, and is six. What we see here in this second cleaning experiments, we have a spread of data sets, and our standard deviation is higher. Whereas in the third cleaning, uh, third cleaning experiment, our standard deviation is very less. So this is, and these data sets we have used for part, uh, calculating the partitioning coefficient from our samples. All right, we talk up some results here. So as I said, when we first did the line analysis in this uh, in the cultured forums, I was just giving two uh, representative images. In the first one here, we can see the gray lines. This is from a line analysis of one specimen. And this line analysis here is from another specimen. Because we know that we spiked this foraminifera, so we know that this outer region is from the our spike thing but we don't know why we have such spikes at this central part. This, this corresponds to the prolocculus. The same here, because we know it's the spiked region. So we say, okay, this is from the spiked person. What about this? How it's coming here that we have a central hump here, which we never spiked it. So this was the confusion in the line analysis or the problem in the data sets. So to solve that, we went for the spots analysis in the same, in the same track. So when we did the spot analysis on the regions, we could see that this hump was totally absent in this spot analysis. So here we can say the line analysis that is normally done for like corals or uh, uh, molars is not applicable here. We can, we can only retrieve data sets by doing the analysis on the regions. To confirm it further, we went for a depth profiling of these particular spots. The reason is in this place here, we slightly see an elevated value here and also here. So we thought, okay, let's do the spot profiling for this particular reason, which is from the spike place. And from these two locations, S6 and S10, which are definitely from the non-spike regions. With, this, with the depth profiling, you see this, because this corresponds to the uh, spike region, from the surface to the depth, it, it constantly shows the same value because it was spiked. And this part of the calcite, it formed in our laboratory from the cultured solutions. Whereas here, what we see, that some portion on the top is, is getting mixed or the older calcite is mixed with the new culture solutions. Or we say that there have been some secondary overgrowths. Okay. We also did some staining experiments to see how the growth pattern is, uh, how the growth is forming in this foraminifera cells. So we marked the reason before we put it, uh, before, we, before uh, we started the culture solutions. So we know how much it has grown in the laboratory and how much it was grown in the nature. So we, we did with alteration of like a, a lizard and calcine so that we can see if we are getting a systematic alternating band or not. But what we see is uh, even, on the, even on the surfaces which grew in the nature or which, which was which are formed in the nature, we still have the signs of this calcine and algerine on the top of them, which means that there was some some sets uh, some secondary overgrowth uh, from our culture solutions on the pre-existing chambers. All right, I just go back. Okay, but uh, so, so to 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 get rid of this, so these these things are these are central humps, and to get rid of this the spot analysis and the combination of the depth profiling helped us to pick out this data sets. And we, and we followed the same approach of the spot analysis on the reaches and the depth profiling to pick out, to, uh, to generate the partitioning coefficient from our, for our experiments. Okay, we talk about some results here. So we did, we had, a, we have five different sequence of uh, culture, like S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, five different batches. S1 is the control experiment, which is, which is cultured using the normal filtered seawater. Whereas S2, S3, S4, S5 had different concentrations of lead, S5 being the very highest, around 260 ppb, and S4 being the half of S5, and S3 being half of S4, S2 being half of S3. 
what we see is there is there is incorporation or the, the cell has the newly precipitated cells they have incorporated lead for this is your lock, lock scale piece so s2 s3 in batches s2 s3 s4 we see uh, we see a linear incorporation whereas in s5 we don't see any uh, incorporation at the same time we would like to say here that the uh, the forums in batch number s5 had almost died and we think that this is definitely because of the lead toxicity or the stress developed because of this case. so to calculate our partitioning coefficients we took this batches s2 s3 and s4 and when we calculate the partition coefficients, we get 2.61 plus minus 0 0.2. And we propose a growth model from this Empisaurus. So they grow, suppose they, they grow, they have the chambers, they keep growing. But on the, when they, on the next layer, so it forms some minor overgrowth on the initial chambers. Suppose the th third one here, it, it also has some imprints on the first overgrowth chambers. Okay, so these are the conclusions we'd like to say here. The spot analysis on reaches is the only method we can retrieve data sets from this MP0 cells. The new calcite formed in the laboratory is strongly linearly correlated with the R square value around 0 0.99. And the partition coefficient for lead is 2.61 plus minus 0.2 from our culture experiments. And it has very high potential for monitoring both long term in years and short term seasonal fluctuations of lead concentrations in coastal reef environments. And my closures, acknowledgements, I'd like to thank my professors, supervisors, Professor Malcolm Melko, Dr. Alexis Sedekov, and the Australian government, and the Rottnest Island for permissions, and my parent institute in India, CSR and GRM. Thank you.